If you use Blender daily or plan to build a professional career around it, there are several key settings you should be familiar with. These settings can significantly impact your workflow, efficiency, and the quality of your final output. I won't be following any specific order. I'll list these settings as they come to mind. They're scattered throughout Blender's interface, so I'll go over them randomly, explaining why each one matters and how adjusting it can improve your workflow. The first setting to consider is Resolution Scale, which can be found in Blender's Preferences under the Interface tab. This setting controls the size of icons, text, and UI elements, making it crucial for optimizing your workspace based on your monitor's resolution. Since everyone uses different displays, adjusting this setting can greatly improve usability. For example, if you're working on a 1920 by 1080 monitor, Blender's default UI may feel too large, especially when splitting the interface into multiple panels. Icons, tools, and text can take up too much space, making navigation cumbersome. On the other hand, if you're using a 2K or 4K display, the default UI may appear too small and spaced out, making it difficult to read text or access tools efficiently. While you could change your operating system's resolution or scaling settings, doing that every time you open Blender isn't ideal. Instead, Resolution Scale allows you to fine-tune the UI directly in Blender, making the interface larger for high-resolution screens or scaling it down for smaller ones, ensuring a comfortable and efficient workflow regardless of your display size. Blender can crash at any time, and in some cases, it may even corrupt your saved file potentially causing you to lose hours of work. Keeping a manual backup is always a good idea, but let's be honest, it's easy to forget to update it regularly. Fortunately, Blender has an auto-save feature that automatically creates backup copies of your project. By default, it saves every two minutes, but depending on your workflow and system speed, that may be either too frequent or not frequent enough. To adjust this setting, go to Preferences, Save and Load, and modify the auto save timer. Setting it to a shorter interval can help prevent data loss in case of a crash, while a longer interval might be preferable if you're working on a complex scene and don't want frequent interruptions. By tweaking this setting, you ensure that Blender saves your progress at the right frequency, giving you a reliable fallback in case things go wrong. If you ever find parts of your scene getting cut off in the viewport or camera view, it's likely due to the clip start or clip end settings. These control the minimum and maximum distances at which objects are visible in the viewport or render. Blender uses these settings as an optimization feature to improve performance by limiting how much of the scene is drawn. If clip start is set too high, objects close to the camera may disappear. If clip end is too low, distant objects might vanish unexpectedly. To fix this, go to the View panel, shortcut N in the 3D viewport, and adjust the clip start and clip end values under the View tab. For large-scale scenes, increasing clip end ensures distant elements remain visible, while lowering clip start prevents nearby objects from being cut off. Um, this setting is especially useful in architectural visualizations, large environments, and detailed character models, where objects exist at vastly different scales. When working with tools and modifiers that rely on an axis or direction, such as the bend modifier, displacement modifier, or array modifier, it can sometimes be confusing which axis to use. This is because the results are affected by multiple factors, including the object's origin, pivot point, its scale, location, and rotation. This often leads to unpredictable results, making it difficult to control how the model modifier behaves. A more reliable solution is to use an empty as a reference object and control the modifier with its object coordinates instead. Most modifiers allow you to select an object to drive their transformations, move, rotate, or scale the empty to precisely control the effect of the modifier. This method gives you better consistency across different objects and allows for non-destructive adjustments, making it much easier to fine-tune results without constantly tweaking object transformations. When working with VDB files, especially those downloaded from sources like Embergen, it's important to import them correctly, especially if the VDB is animated. Simply dragging the file into Blender will import it, but it won't retain its animation. Don't just drag and drop the file. This will only import a static frame. Instead, go to Add Volume Import Open VDB. Three, locate your VDB sequence, select All Frames, and Import. This ensures Blender loads the VDB as an animated sequence instead of a single static frame. 
If the VDB doesn't appear in EV, it's likely due to Blender's volume clipping settings. To fix this, adjust the clip distance. Go to Render Properties EV Volumes and tweak the clip start end values. If the VDB is too large or too small, it may be outside the clipping range. Scaling it up or down can bring it into view. By following these steps, you'll ensure your animated VDB sequences import correctly and display properly in both Cycles and Eevee. If you have a supported GPU, you need to manually enable it for Blender to use it in Cycles. Otherwise, it will default to the CPU, which is much slower for rendering. Open Preferences, go to Edit Preferences System, select your render device. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, choose CUDA, older cards, Optics, RTX, and newer cards, faster denoising support. If you have an AMD GPU, choose HIP for modern AMD cards. If you have an Apple Silicon Mac, choose Metal. Check all available GPUs to use them for rendering. Switch cycles to GPU Compute. Go to Render Properties Device and set it to GPU Compute. Once set up, Blender will now use your GPU for rendering in cycles, significantly speeding up the process compared to CPU rendering. If you have multiple GPUs, Blender can use all of them, but it won't mix AMD and NVIDIA GPUs in cycles rendering. When objects with transparency or glass materials overlap, uh, Blender limits the number of times light can pass through them to optimize performance. This can cause artifacts like dark spots, especially in scenes with alpha textures on leaves or grass. One way to fix this is by increasing the transparent bounces in the render settings under light paths. The default is usually set to 8, but raising it to 16 or higher can help with complex transparency, especially for things like tree leaves, grass, or decals. For glass materials using the Glass BSDF shader, increasing transmission bounces prevents dark patches when viewing multiple layers of glass. Another important setting is transparent shadows, found under Material Properties in the Settings panel. Enabling this ensures that light interacts correctly with alpha textures, preventing unnatural black shadows on leaves or grass. While these adjustments improve accuracy, they can also increase render times, so it's good to find a balance based on the complexity of your scene. Sculpting requires a well-subdivided mesh, but too many subdivisions can slow Blender down. Dynamic Topology solves this by dynamically adding detail only where needed, letting you sculpt freely without pre-subdivision. To enable it, switch to Sculpt Mode, open Active Tool and Workspace Settings, and toggle on Dynetopo. Options like Relative Detail adjust resolution based on zoom, while Constant Detail keeps it uniform. While great for concept sculpting, Dynetopo generates unstructured topology, making it unsuitable for animation. It can also be performance heavy, so remeshing or retopology is often needed afterward. Despite this, it's an essential tool for flexible, detail-focused sculpting. The viewport shading overlay settings in Blender help with visualization by adjusting how objects appear in the viewport. These settings are especially useful for modeling, sculpting, shading, and scene organization. Lighting options like Studio, Matte Cap, and Flat determine how objects are illuminated. Matte Cap is particularly useful for sculpting because it provides a strong sense of form without needing a full lighting setup. Flat removes shading altogether, which can be helpful when focusing on silhouettes or shape design. Wire color settings let you change how wireframes appear. Choosing object mode means the wireframe takes on the object's color, while random assigns different colors to make it easier to distinguish between multiple objects in a scene. Similarly, the color settings control how objects are displayed. Material mode shows their assigned materials, while random assigns distinct colors to each object. Texture mode displays any applied textures, which is useful when working with UV-mapped assets. The background setting changes the viewport backdrop. Using theme keeps it consistent with Blender's UI, World uses the scene's environment settings, and Viewport allows for a custom color. Adjusting this can help improve contrast, making it easier to see objects clearly. Additional options like backface culling hide backfacing polygons, which is useful for checking normals and fixing flipped geometry. X-Ray makes objects partially transparent, letting you select hidden geometry without switching to wireframe mode. The shadow option enables real-time shadows helping with depth perception when positioning objects. Cavity settings enhance depth by adding shading effects to highlight ridges and valleys, making details pop, which is great for sculpting or complex modeling. The outline option adds a bold outline around objects, making them stand out more, which is especially useful when working in cluttered scenes or differentiating between overlapping elements. These settings help create a more readable workspace by improving object distinction, 
making shading feedback clearer, and giving better control over how models appear while working. There are so many settings you can play with, but those are just a few of them. Thanks for watching.